Sean Cole for SRT here, and I have to tell you, most sims or games can be broken into one of two categories, either console-based or PC-based, and often that is the dividing line between the words sim and game. Gran Turismo, Forza, they've often been compared to sims, but to the hardcore sim racer they've fallen short. And that leads us to Grid. Grid started out as a console-based game, or was intended as a console, but was made for the PC as well. Would Grid be the game to finally make my list of sims? Codemasters made this game and made it available on all systems. PC, PS3, Xbox, and Nintendo. I am lucky enough to be trying it out on my PC. I will be using my entire sim pod to test the game instead of using a gamepad like many console racers, and comparing it to my PC sims of choice. Darren will also test Grid on the PS3 and give you his review at the end. In Grid, you will start off by naming your player and immediately are placed into racing environments. After an intense video, it's right into the action. Your crew chief is already giving you orders and telling you what to accomplish or who to look out for in the race. This crew chief will be in your head throughout your racing career. As the lights start flashing and cars are revving the engines, there is an extreme amount of intensity. Finish that race and you are well on your career. Fail to finish and it will be a long road to glory. Grid is really a career-based sim. You build your name, earn some dough so that you can start your own race team. You will paint your car using the paint shop with pre-made designs that you can alter the colors of. Do well in races and you will earn more money and reputation and attract sponsors and bigger purses. Then you move your way up the ladder to more prestigious events. Also, learning licenses in three different regions. When back at the office, a sexy woman's voice talks to you by name and will guide you through managing your race team. Hello, Sean. I'm your new business manager. I'll take care of the money. You take care of the driving. This garage isn't much, but it'll become your second home. I've got a great... You will be responsible for managing your sponsors, your teammates, and what events you enter as well as choosing what cars to purchase with your hard-earned money. Grid covers a broad spectrum of racing types and you will need to purchase a car for all of these types of racing. You will run big American V8 cars, drifting cars, touring cars, and even open-wheeled racers. And these cars will be run on a nice variety of tracks as well, ranging from fictional street courses all the way to some real-life tracks like Le Mans. And lastly, Grid has my favorite effect ever, I mean ever in sim racing. I call it the death flash. And when I first crashed a car hard enough into the wall, it scared the life out of me. Awesome. Now that you've heard a lot about the sim, let's see how it scores. This segment sponsored by Butt Kicker. Take your sim racing experience to the next level with Butt Kicker technology. Get your Butt Kicker LFE kit today for only $300 at buttkickergear.com. Physics is the first category. I wish I could say that Grid had great physics, but I can't. I wish I could say Grid drove like a real car, but I can't. In driving Grid, you will feel that the cars turn like a pendulum and are inclined to always oversteer and overcorrect because of the sloppiness. The driving is very gamey and in no way simulates driving a real car. When driving some of the rear wheel drive American cars that felt closer to real life than others, that pendulum effect also worked well for drift cars. But when driving anything high performance or in the open wheeled cars, the sim feels like an arcade at best. And then to take it further from what I'd like to see, there is no setup function at all. For physics, Grid scores a 50. <laughs> graphics is up next. The graphics and Grid are outstanding. The realism that is included gives you the best seat view in all of sim racing. You will be convinced that you are driving these fine cars and tracks. The crowd literally goes wild and you can see the fans snapping pictures and leaning over the barriers to cheer you on. There are moving items out on the track as well. If a car loses a bumper, it will lay in the track constantly getting knocked around by the other cars going by. The modeling of the cars is second to none and the lighting effects are also as good as it gets. But if you really want to be blown away, it comes during replays. Grid has turned replays into cinematic perfection. I guarantee you that you will be watching all of your replays as much as racing. They are that good. For graphics, Grid scores a 96. Damage is up next and Grid has really made me think about this category. On the visual level, Grid has more damage effects than any other driving game I've played. 
You will lose bumpers, windshields, and see doors and hoods flapping in the wind. On the visual level, Grid has a fantastic damage modeling. However, if we are talking about damage affecting your car, then Grid is very easy going. You can take a guardrail line all the way around a corner. You'll create a lot of sparks and panel damage to your car. However, this will hardly affect the way your car drives. Beat the living snot out of the car and yes, you can kill it or damage it enough to make it not drive well, but you really have to hurt it bad to get to that point. For damage, I give Grid an 80. Sounds are also very important when it comes to sim racing, and this is an area that Grid has done well. I'm not going to say that the sounds are truly authentic to the cars, but Grid has captured the intensity of sound. The squealing of tires around corners are while locking up the brakes, and the crash sounds are the best ever. They also have great sounds outside of the driving with music and cheering crowds and all sorts of other sound effects. And then of course, our sexy manager telling you how well you are doing. We've tuned up the car and it's ready to drive. You gotta love that sound. For sound, I give Grim 88. <laughs> Cost or bang for buck is also important and ultimately will affect people's expectations. Grid is coming in at about 50 bucks. For that, you get a very complete storyline game, tons of cars and tons of tracks. A fair price for the amount of content included. Grid gets a 90 here. Fun Factor is a category that really accounts for a little of all categories. You can have a sim that is weak in a category or two, but if somehow it's Fun Factor is through the roof, you have a worthy title. Grid is about as fun a driving game as one could create. They have a great career mode that sucks you into wanting more, Damage and replays that entertain you well beyond driving. Grid is fun. Grid is tons of fun. It is hard to stop playing Grid once you get going. For fun factor, Grid is a solid 90. The old saying goes, when was racing invented? As soon as the second car was finished being built. And that brings us to multiplayer. Grid has multiplayer capabilities and works just like a console game. Your computer becomes the host or joins someone else doing the same. There is no server list to join any game you want. Also, I had to open a couple of ports on my firewall in order to make it work. Once I was online playing, I could only find rooms with two to four people and I found it very hard to get a good race. The talent was out there, but the fields were not. In the races I ran, I found the connections to be pretty good and the play was also good. But compared to other PC sims, Grid is very weak in multiplayer overall, therefore only getting a 75. AI, artificial intelligence. How much do the computer players fight you or how hard do they drive against you? Grid has some good AI and some good racing can be done there. They will bump and bang with you for sure and don't take getting passed lightly. The Sims' main focus is running a career and therefore dependent on AI racing. They have put more energy into this than most modern Sims. For AI, I give Grid an 88. Car selection and models is part of graphics, but since we are in car games, it's a category of its own. Nothing is sure to ruin even a great sim if it has bad car models. Grid has very good car models, and a selection of cars that are very worth modeling. In fact, Grid comes with 37 different cars covering several eras, including 60s muscle cars, super tuned drift cars, mainly from Japan, concept cars, prototype racers, and many more. Grid is sure to impress even the pickiest when it comes to car details and therefore scores a 91 here. Since we are talking racing, well what about tracks, both in quantity and quality? Grid comes with 21 different driving areas with 47 tracks or varieties. Of the 47, 37 of them can be run backwards as well. The tracks are very nice looking and many of them are fantasy tracks. The real life tracks are nice enough that you will know where you are but not the best versions of the real life tracks out there. There's enough of them to keep you busy for a very long time, and therefore Grid scores an 84. Force feedback can also make or break a sim for those who depend on it. Grid does a great job with rumble strips and other obstructions. It also gives you good lightning of the wheel and driving sideways. However, the physics and the force feedback don't always get along. 
the precision of the tracks doesn't give as much advantage to having it over a non-force feedback wheel. Grid gets an average score in this department of 75. Presentation and ease of use. Grid is all about presentation. This game will have you sucked in way before you get on the track. It will also keep you going through your career. Ease of use goes two different ways. Coming over from consoles, the game is very simplified in its menus and defaulted right away to my Logitech wheel. However, I was unable to remap the buttons and it did not recognize my shifter. This also means those of you with multiple wheel and pedal combos will not be able to map certain controls. In presentation, grid is fantastic. And if using only a single wheel, its menus are very easy as well. For presentation and easy use, it gets an 85. That gives Grid an overall score of 82.6, which can rival some pretty good sims. In fact, imagine how high a score Grid could have achieved with better physics, multiplayer, and force feedback. I'm both surprised and impressed. After reviewing Grid, I feel that Codemasters has done something terrific. They have pointed out something that almost all sims have forgotten about, and that is everything outside of the physics. Don't get me wrong, physics is still number one, but I think what if iRacing or R-Factor had all of these great features? What if when starting a season against worthy AI, you had a manager and a whole career mode? What if all sims had intensity like Grid? I had as much fun with Grid as any sim that I play religiously. And no, it's no sim. This is an arcade driving game. Grid will be a letdown if you are a sim purist and that is all you want from a driving title. Oh! Well, if you love driving, you love driving games, you love car carnage, then you're going to love Grid. I sure do, and now I can't even stop playing it. So why don't we check in with Darren and see what he thinks about it. All right. Darren Gandy here. Sean's uh, now taking you through the PC version. Race Driver Grid from Codemasters. Got the intro running here. I've said it on the SRT Live Show. Best arcade racer of all time. I'm definitely going to stand by that. As to date, there's no question. Um, believe it or not, that intro looks a lot like the game. And I'm, a lot of you have probably already seen it, but going to run you through my take of this. Sean's told you everything that this game has to offer, and the PS3 version is identical. So I'm not going to go through all the career stuff. I'm just going to go through all our ratings, our 12 ratings, and uh, let you know what I feel about it. Race Driver Grid from Codemasters. Here we go. First off, we'll start with the physics. Not very realistic at all, like we've mentioned. Very arcade-like. I don't feel connected at all. We've mentioned in the past where the rubber meets the road uh, when uh, we've referred to physics, and that's where this title is missing big time. Another thing that's missing is that you can't configure your car in the garage, so you're driving whatever they give you. Physics department, 50. Next up, graphics. Like I mentioned, doesn't get better than this. Just completely incredible. With the amount of action that's going on at once, I'm amazed at the frame rate, not a flicker. Codemaster puts you on the grid as a race driver and you feel like you've stepped into a Fast and the Furious or Gone in 60 Seconds movie. The visual damage is insane with doors flapping, bumpers dragging, and mayhem taking place every second of the ride. One of the most intense moments I've experienced in a driving game or racing sim is when you have that fatal crash like Sean showed you, the red screen of death. The first time it happened, it scared the crap out of me. Presentation or ease of use, 95. First off, I can watch the intro over and over again. Love the music and I love the editing. Hello Darren, your car is ready and waiting. I'm also in love with my sexy female team manager even though I don't know what she looks like. One of my favorite parts of the interface is, in my opinion, Codemasters has the best wheel configuration variables of any title I've tried on the PS3. There's lots of sliders to get your wheel dialed in properly, so make sure you take your time and use trial and error. Next up, damage. The object is to cross the finish line. 82. Would have given it 100 here if the visual damage matched the physical damage. Visually, this is the best I've seen in any racing game ever. The only thing is that it doesn't affect the car the way you would expect it to with that much impact. But you can destroy the car, which as mentioned is pretty intense. Fun Factor 99. Once you get used to the 
kind of crappy physics or lack thereof. You get your wheel dialed in properly if that's what you're using to drive with. This is one of the funnest video games I've played, period. I love how it puts you right behind the wheel as a race driver. It feels like you are the lead character in this movie called Grid, and that ride never ends. Next category, sounds. Also an 82 here. Sounds are pretty cool. You can hear parts flying off and flapping like when your bumper starts dragging, you can hear it. Tire sounds are decent, motor sounds are decent, so 82 here. Next up, tracks. 24 hours of Le Mans is a 24 hour race on one of the world's most challenging circuits, the prestigious Circuit de la Somme. A lot of tracks and variety with reverse options at some, beautifully rendered. The real tracks don't seem accurately modeled compared to sim versions I've driven. Fantasy tracks are amazing. I knocked it down a few points here because of the real tracks being off. 90 points. Car models, also beautifully rendered and lots of variety in licenses. I'll give an extra point here because the future Camaro was included. 96 points. Multiplayer, gonna give it an 80 here. 16 players max on the PS3 with the ability to set up private races. Everything seems warp and lag free as long as you're on a good connection. There's no dedicated server mode. I really don't like voice chat during racing and it gets pretty annoying online. The racing online has been pretty good with some pretty fast drivers out there. And on the PS3, there's lots of racing anytime I've tried to find it. Again, multiplayer, 80 points. AI or artificial intelligence, 95. With lots of adjustability, these AI drivers are pretty tough. They'll definitely battle back. Two to go here, force feedback. Gave it a 78. Got some decent effects, but most of them feel pretty canned. Again, it's the whole rubber meets the road, and I think it's, it has to do with the physics. So 78 here for force feedback. Last but not least, cost. At this point, I'm sure this game ranges anywhere from 20 bucks up to 50, depending on if you find it new, used, eBay, depending on where you get it. Man, this is probably one of the best bangs for your buck you're gonna get uh, in an arcade or sim racer. Lots of depth, lots of tracks, lots of cars, multiplayer, the grid world, career is just incredible. Cost 90. Overall score, 86 out of 100. Again, drove this with the Logitech Driving Force GT, and uh, lots of different ways you can dial this thing in and make sure you do if you're gonna go ahead and use it. Don't just run it straight out of the box. You know, if you're a racing fan, you got a PS3, must have title. This thing is definitely worth checking out. I mean, you see the graphics are just insane on this thing. Physics are very disappointing. Um, yeah, I'm really curious to see what they're gonna do, what they're gonna bring from this into the F1 title that they're, they're gonna be working on. Rumor has it MMG, the, the uh, mod team is going to be doing a, a PC sim with them, so kind of curious about that. But, uh, I mean, look at these graphics, just unbeatable. All right, there's uh, my take on the uh, game Race Driver Grid from Codemasters for the PS3. You heard what Sean had to say about the PC. And it's definitely worth checking out. You won't be disappointed. Um, if you're looking for a full-on driving simulation, this is not for you, but if you're looking for non-stop, action-packed adventure as a race car driver, go ahead and pick this one up for you. I'm Darren Ganji. Thanks for watching.